We are the Oregon State Mars Rover team. After a brief venture into another competition, we are excited to be returning to URC for 2017. Since September, we've been hard at work building this year's rover. Here's a brief overview of our design. Not wanting to start from scratch, we have salvaged many components from our 2011 rover, but some things needed serious revising. For example, our old chassis was made from small, round carbon fiber tubing that led to large deflections when under load. Our new chassis has been remade with sturdy 1-inch square carbon fiber tubing with CNC aluminum insert blocks. This took a lot of prep and research from our mechanical team, as no one had experience bonding composites before. Custom carbon fiber plates add additional strength by sandwiching the blocks and tubing. The result is an extremely rigid core chassis that can still use the existing outer bogies. Our suspension is a variant of the rocker bogey system, a favorite of NASA. However, we are able to eliminate a complicated and heavy differential by replacing the back rocker with a horizontal pivoting member. This results in a very similar motion while giving us more design flexibility and saving weight. Each of our six wheels has a dedicated DC brushed motor and large shredded tires to tackle any terrain. The arm is another part of the rover being improved. We are removing weight by remaking some old bulky linkages in an intelligent way. In addition, we are adding 360 degree rotation to our base and wrist. End effectors can be swapped out swiftly in the field thanks to a quick disconnect system on the end of the arm. This allows us to have separate grasping and science end effectors. In addition, the whole arm can be removed from the rover when it is not needed, such as the autonomous traversal task. Good vision is one of the keys to success in this competition and one of our failing points in the past, so we're using a high quality camera on a pan tilt system mounted to an adjustable lightweight tripod. This allows us to position the entire camera strategically on the rover depending on the task to ensure we always have a good view of what's going on. Moreover, we are also placing smaller auxiliary cameras on things such as the end of the arm and below the chassis. These give us a pinpoint view of every aspect of the rover. Based on some hard lessons learned and a lot of magic smoke being released, the electrical systems are being kept as simple as possible. Commands are sent from the base station in a packet-based structure and interpreted on the rover. The rover then reacts accordingly, whether this is moving its motors or sending back sensor readings. To control all of this, a custom central board was designed and manufactured. This is known as the mini board. Other external components, such as sensors and motor drivers, are connected and interfaced with it. Some of these sensors include GPS, a compass, an IMU, and inputs for analog feedback from the joints of the arm. Data is sent and received over a 2.4 GHz XB Pro module. Video is transmitted over the 1.2 GHz band. Since there are multiple camera feeds, a video mux is incorporated onto the mini board and is controlled by the operator to switch cameras. The rover has 13 DC motors that are driven by Sabertooth 2x12 boards. These are controlled in packetized serial mode, only requiring one UART transmit line. We also have five AX12 digital servos used for smaller actuations, being controlled through a one-wire serial interface. Power is provided to the rover using two 6-cell 22.2-volt lithium polymer batteries wired in parallel, for a total capacity of nearly 900 watt-hours, giving us plenty of overhead on any event. Our base station runs a custom graphical user interface program that displays all the data about the rover and also sends the command and control packets. Some of the various information needed by the operators is current GPS location, rover heading, and physical orientation. The rover is controlled using a FreeSky Tyrannus transmitter that is used as a USB joystick when plugged into the base station. Additional controls are fed in through another generic USB gamepad. A huge plus to using the Tyrannus is that we can leave an RC receiver on the rover and have a short range connection with no base station required. This allows for extremely easy and efficient testing of various components. The science task is approached using two different techniques. The first is gathering data while in the field. A soil probe that can read temperature, moisture, and salinity provides valuable data from the sample location. To collect a sample, we have tested an auger drill and sterile sample containment system. Secondly, when the sample is returned to the base station, several tests are performed. A nitrogen content test, phosphorus content test, and pH test. These simple tests do not require expensive equipment and give valuable insights to the composition of the soil. We're very eager to return to URC this year and hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching.